Welcome to Ganitika.com. This is a website for mathematics lovers, learners and leaders. This video is going to demonstrate how to find the derivatives of functions using first principle method. Before going into the method, let's understand the geometrical meaning of derivatives. Let's say we have a function y equal to f of x. Let's mark two points a and b on this function. Suppose that these two points are very close to each other. For example, if a is having an x coordinate of x is equal to 1, then b should be having an x coordinate of x is equal to 1.0001. So they are so close to each other, but here they are zoomed. So let us join the points a and b, making a chord a b there, and then we can make a right angle triangle with this chord well, like this. Let's say the angle made by the chord with the x axis is theta. So we have a right angle triangle and a theta there. Since a and b are very close to each other, the difference in the x coordinates and the y coordinates are very very small. Therefore, we call them as delta x and delta y. In mathematics, delta is the symbol used for small changes. And in this case, the difference in x is very small and difference in y coordinates is also very small. Therefore, we use delta x and delta y to indicate those two sides of the right angle triangle, which gives us the relation tan theta equal to delta y over delta x from the triangle that we have just drawn. Now let's say that this b is going to move towards a, which means b is going to coincide with a. In that case, the difference in the x coordinates is going to become smaller and smaller and eventually it becomes zero. Also, if you look at the diagram, the chord AB becomes a tangent at A and the theta becomes another angle, say phi. So phi is the angle made by the tangent at A with the x-axis. So theta becomes another angle phi as B approaches A. With these three conditions, we can apply the limit on both the sides of the above expression, say limit x delta x tending to 0 of tan theta equal to limit delta x tending to 0 of delta y over delta x. So we are using the limit as delta x tending to 0 because that's what we are going to have when b approaches a. So if you look at the left hand side of this equation, as delta x tending to 0, theta tends to phi. Therefore, the limit of delta x tending to 0 of tan theta would become tan phi because tan theta becomes tan phi eventually. On the right hand side, this limit is being written as del dy over dx. So tan phi is equal to dy over dx and the, this dy over dx is the derivative of y with respect to x. So the limit of delta x tending to 0 of small change in y over small change in x is the derivative of y with respect to x and that is equal to tan phi. And what is phi? Phi is the angle that the tangent makes with the x axis. Therefore dy by dx is nothing but the slope of the tangent at the point a on the function f of x. So let's have the same function y equal to f of x and let's have those two points a and b again. And we'll join the points a and b with the chord a, b and we'll make the same triangle as we did before. Now let's consider this point as x, which means the coordinates of a is x comma f of x because the function is f of x. If I add a small increment h to x, then the x coordinate of b would be x plus h. Therefore, the coordinates of b would be x plus h comma f of x plus h. Now, if this is theta, we have tan theta equal to change in y over change in x. Change in y is the change in the y coordinates f of x plus h minus f of x and the change in x is nothing but the h value here. Applying the limit as h tending to 0 in this case because delta x is being replaced by h in this case and we have this equation tan limit of tan theta equal to limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h and h tending to 0 is the limit. You know that the left hand side is nothing but dy over dx and just we saw that. Right hand limit gives you the expression for dy over dx and this gives you the formula which is called the first principle method to find the derivative of y with respect to x. So far we just saw what is the derivative of y which is also written as f of x with respect to x. We saw the notation as dy over dx. We can also write that as y prime or y dash. We can also write this as f dash of x or d over dx of f of x. All these notations represent the derivative of y with respect to x. Now let's use this first principle method to find the derivatives of polynomial function. The simplest polynomial function is x to the power of n. And in order to apply the first principle method, we need to find f of x plus h. In this case, f of x plus h is x plus h to the power of n. And the first principle method states, 
f dash of x is equal to limit h tending to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And we just substitute the values of f of x plus h and f of x in this expression. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to let x plus h as y, therefore h is equal to y minus x. So if in the above expression, the denominator becomes y minus x and the numerator becomes y to the power of n minus x to the power of n. But what happens to the limit as h tending to 0? If you substitute h tending to 0 in the expression x plus h, then y tends to x. Therefore, the limit becomes y tending to x and the expression becomes y to the power of n minus x to the power of n over y minus x. Now, you should go back to the limits chapter and recall this limit. Limit x tending to a of x to the power of n minus a to the power of n over x minus a is actually equal to n times a to the power of n minus 1. This has been proved in Ganitika.com under the limits chapter. So, you can see that you can actually apply this limit which means it is n times x to the power of n minus 1. In the place of a we have x therefore n times x to the power of n minus 1 is the, the derivative of x to the power of n. How is this used? If f of x is x to the power of n, its derivative is n x to the power of n minus 1. We can use this to find the derivatives of the polynomials. For example, x to the power of 10 would be 10 x to the power of 10 minus 1, which is 10 x to the power of 9. x to the power of 5 would be 5 x to the power of 5 minus 1, which is 4. Therefore, x to the power of 5 on differentiation becomes 5 x to the power of 4. What about x? The derivative of x is 1. How? x can be written as x to the power of 1 and on differentiation it gives 1 x to the power of 1 minus 1 which is 0 therefore 1 x to the power of 0 and the value for that is 1 therefore derivative of x is 1. What about the derivative of a constant? The constant can be written as k times 1 and 1 can be written as x to the power of 0 and differentiating that using the rule that we just got 0 times x to the power of 0 minus 1 which is 0 times x to the power of negative 1 which means we are multiplying by 0 therefore the final answer is 0. What about 1 over x? The derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x square. How did we get this? By replacing 1 over x as x to the power of minus 1 and using the formula n x to the power of n minus 1 you will get this as minus 1 over x square. Same with 1 over x square. You have to change 1 over x square as x to the power of minus 2 and apply the formula. What about square root of x? Square root of x as a power can be written as x to the power of half and if you apply the formula to that you will get 1 over 2 root x and about 1 over root x becomes minus 1 over 2 root of x cube because 1 over root x can be written as x to the power of negative half and since n is negative half apply the formula n x power n minus 1 you will get this answer. x to the power of 1 over 3, 1 over 3 x to the power of minus 2 over 3. In case if I have a number before x to the power of n, you retain the number as it is and differentiate only x to the power of n into n x to the power of n minus 1. For example, if I have 3 x to the power of 5, you keep the 3 as it is. x to the power of 5 on differentiation becomes 5 x to the power of 4 and final results will be 3 multiplied by 5 which is 15 x to the power of 4. So, 3 x power 5 on differentiation gives you 15 x to the power of 4. Let's use this formula to find the derivative of a polynomial. For example, let's have y equal to 5x cubed minus 4x squared plus 8x minus 2. In order to find the derivative of this polynomial, we are going to find the derivative of each term. For example, 5x cubed becomes 5 times 3x squared. x cubed is being differentiated into 3x squared. Same way with 4x squared becomes 4 times 2x, 8x becomes 8 and minus 2 becomes 0 because that is a constant. You need to insert the signs as given in the question. So, compiling them together you will get y dash which is the differentiation of y with respect to x is 15x square minus 8x plus 8 and the 0 for the constant so we do not write that 0 there in the answer. Let us take another example and let us do term by term differentiation. and insert all the signs as given in the question and simplify them. So, this is the derivative of the given function y. So, 
So we'll continue with more examples with the derivative of polynomials. So let's say the polynomial is square root of x minus 1 over square root of x. So square root of x can be written as x to the power of half, 1 over square root of x can be written as x to the power of negative half and using the n x power n minus 1 formula, this is what we get on differentiation. Therefore, the derivative of y given above is this. Another example, we have one polynomial divided by x square and in this case we can separate the x square for each term and simplify into a polynomial like this. And then as usual we differentiate each term, 3x becomes 3, 4 becomes 0 and 8x to the power of negative 2 becomes negative 2x to the power of negative 3. So simplifying that we will get the derivative as 3 minus 16 over x cube. Now let's move on to finding the derivatives of trigonometric functions using the first principle method. The two trigonometric functions that we will be doing are sin x and cos x. So first let's define the derivative of sin x. In order to apply the first principle method, we need to find f of x plus h, in this case sin of x plus h. And applying them into the first principle method, you will have this limit. And I am going to expand the sin x plus h using the compound angle formula for sin x plus h. And what I am doing now is, I am collecting the sin x terms together and keep the remaining term as it is and divide the h for each term as shown here. Because I want to apply the limit separately for these two terms. Here you can see that the functions cos x and sin x are independent of h, therefore they can be taken out of the limit and written like this. Now you have to go back to the limits chapter and recall that limit of sin h over h as h tending to 0 is 1 and the limit of cos h minus 1 over h as h tending to 0 is 0. This has been done in ganitika.com under the chapter limits. So substituting the limit values, you will get this expression cos x multiplied by 1 plus sin x multiplied by 0 which gives you the value cos of x. Therefore, the derivative of sin x with respect to x is cos x. Now let us do cos x. In the same way, f of x plus h and f of x, substitute them in the formula and expand using the compound angle for cos x plus h. and collect the terms with cos x together and divide each term by h separately. Take the cos x outside and finding the limits you will get this and therefore the final answer is negative sin x. So differential of cos x with respect to x is negative sin x. So you should remember differential of sin x is cos x and differential of cos x is minus sin x. Thanks for watching.